Hey guys, welcome to part one of the ATST from Bandai. And I've done a little bit of work already. And what I've done is uh, I started pretty much on like the cockpit parts. And I'll just give you a look at these. And as I said in my Falcon video, I try to get as much mileage out of my primer as possible. So these are just colored with. Uh, just my cheap primer, which is which is this stuff here. It's just really cheap crap. I think it was like seven dollars or something like that. Uh, I don't really believe in going for the expensive uh, hobby primer because it's, in my experience, there's just no no difference. So that's the back part of the cockpit there, and I actually put a wash on. It's a Citadel wash. Uh, where is it? There it is. So I washed all these parts. I didn't gloss them at all. Uh, where's the other one? Now I haven't done this side yet. I've just painted it. Uh, all I've done is you can see the um, you can see the main primer color of everything, and I've actually gone in and um, and painted like the green areas with. Uh, light sea grey, which is XS, XF25, and um, yeah, and, that, and that's it, and here's one which I cooked earlier, here's one from earlier, and um, yeah, this is the light sea grey, and I put a wash over the whole thing, uh, the Citadel wash, no gloss or anything, just put it on quite heavy handedly, and wipes it off with a cotton swab, and it looks, uh, yeah, it looks really good. I'm really, really happy with it. You're never going to see this, really, when it's in the model. But, um, I mean, the detail on it is just so, so beautiful. You, you, you know, you can't not do a good job on it. I think that's focused, sort of. Yeah, that's a better look. Really, like, amazing detail on there, and the rock wash really brings it out. And particularly on this back panel here, um, when applying the wash, I really just I applied it evenly all over everything. But when I was wiping it off with a cotton swab, I just sort of concentrated, like, dabbing the middle bits so that it looked a little bit like, yeah, you know, more realistic or whatever. Down there, really awesome. And, of course, for this bit, I brought out all the detail initially just with a wash, again, not over a gloss or anything, and then went over that again with a little bit of colour, in this case silver and red. They're all just Citadel uh, Games Workshop kind of colours, and, yeah, it has a really cool Empire look to it. So that's the internal pieces, and as I said, I will be giving this a wash and giving it a paint up uh, for you, just for you guys so you can see what I did there and uh, oh, there's the uh, tub as well same deal uh, right uh, okay I don't need that right now and the work I did on the main body was just uh, I assembled basically this leg piece and which was really quite involved. I think it took me about 25 minutes to half an hour to do, I think. Uh, mainly, mainly because I hadn't done it before and I didn't want to screw it up, but also because there are so many parts to this. Um, yeah, get a bit of a better look here. There are heaps and heaps of parts to this. It's incredibly detailed, as you can see. Let's get on to the assembly on these are the um, the pilots, I haven't really painted them yet again I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of my primer because the primer color is quite close to the uh, the clothing color that I need really I just need to put some highlights on the on the coats, the overalls and paint the helmets green and and all the rest of it and they'll be finished so let's, let's get to this part eh so the instructions are pretty simple, it doesn't really matter that they're not in English, the bits that we need are in English, uh, they're basically just parts and sprue call-outs and things. So we're going to be starting, as you can see, at highlights, 
uh, what area you're going to be working on for step five, and it just takes you through, and you know, bit by bit, you end up with, you know, a full leg. So, I'll do the first couple of bits with you. So we're after sprue B part thirteen. Let's put the camera down here. So sprue B. This is A. We don't want A. B. So sprue B and was it thirteen, wasn't it? Yes, thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. Which is an unlucky number. So it's kind of funny that we're starting on it. Now oh one thing that I really did want to point out is that these tabs, you gotta be really careful with this kit. And I think all Bandai kits because you don't need glue with these, so some of the parts do, you know, have have ways that you that you lock uh, the parts onto, if that makes sense. Um, so in some cases, you know, where these parts uh, lock onto the sprue, it'll look like you're supposed to take off the whole thing when in fact you're not. You're supposed to leave it. So yeah, just be wary that you have um, that you're actually supposed to take the whole thing off, um, and you should be fine. There are a couple of parts that you, you know you're supposed to leave the extension on, but it's not it's not too common. Now instead of using sandpaper, I just like to nip off the uh, the edge injection edges like that. Now this mates up with a click piece, which is what these um, which is what these things mean. It means click, and because I've actually primed a lot of these parts. <laughs> My parts don't click, they just sort of go and they fit. Um, but it is supposed to meet up with a click piece, and that click piece is from sprue A. A, A, A. A, you don't see it. As you can see, I've only got one part 12 left, because I did use it on the other leg, and I think, yes, this is a perfect example of what I was just talking about. Um, now, you want to leave that part on and cut here in the middle. So, like, it kind of, at a glance, it does look like you're supposed to cut it there, but you, you really want to leave, you really want to cut it there in the middle and leave that little knob at the end. So we'll do that. Oh, here's my knife. And yeah, you're just left with a wee thing at the end that you want to clean up. You know, if I had a proper tripod and proper camera for that matter, this would be a little more interesting to look at. But I'm just going to have to deal with it for now. Well, I'm just going to have to deal with it for now. I'll just nip those edges off. And yeah, okay. So this little part keys in like this. Like that. And that just sort of goes in like that. And now we have, just making sure I don't need to put anything else on, because there are so many parts on this that I actually don't, I don't remember exactly what was done the last time. So that'll just go in like that. Bam, no glue. We'll carry on and we'll get, we'll get the legs on this guy. Right. So, as I was saying before, with these parts, I applied a wash um, on top of the primer to get this weathered effect, and I did leave a part unfinished, uh, just so I could show you guys exactly what I did. It's extremely simple. Uh, yeah, it's very, very simple, and all you have to do is, I mean, all I did was put on a couple of, a couple of simple colors. This is still primer. This is uh, light sea grey, the, the padding, and these are just after I put the wash on, just some highlight colours of silver and red. 
So this is the opposite wall, which I haven't put a wash on yet. And all I'm going to be doing is grabbing this, giving it a shake. Uh, it up here, and just like load up your brush. Okay. And, and just apply it. And there's no... Um, there's no gloss coat on this or anything so I like to be quite heavy with it because I want to leave as much of this crap on all the detail as possible and the reason I'm using a fine brush is just so I can get in here and get all these uh, green details here so there's tons of wash on there and just using just a cotton swab like this I'm just going to I start to take a bit of it out just in dabbing motions and that sort of residue you get left over after you've done it after you've dabbed the excess off is usually not what you want but in this case since it's an interior I don't mind that being there at all and here's the completed section now I don't remember quite where I left off with this, uh, but I've pretty much got the interior completed and I put a, I tried to put a lot of work into it actually, even though it wasn't going to be seen uh, pretty much at all. Um, but what happened was I just, I had so much fun with it that I just wanted to to put heaps of effort in and, um, and have it turn out quite nicely. Um, I was actually debating, I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure from memory I've already shown you know, the completed, the, the walls and stuff, but I haven't shown the figures yet. Um, I was actually not looking forward to painting the figures. I don't do a lot of uh, mini work, and I actually contemplated leaving them out, but there are actually some, like, gross, I mean, the chair doesn't look very good without the figure, so I decided to paint them up. Um, and I know it's a snow display, so they should probably be dressed like the snow troopers from Empire, but, you know, what, what the hell, I wanted to do them like this anyway, so I played with, around with a bit of highlights, and I think they turned out really cool, they, they turned out better than I hoped for, actually, um, I'm thinking I might go a shade gr darker on the green, um, I tried to highlight the helmet just like I highlighted the uniforms, and it, it didn't turn out that well, I think I preferred the forest green or whatever it was that I used the Tamiya color straight out of the bottle with no highlights so so that's those guys and they sort of fit in in like this and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how the whole thing looks and of course um, I've actually I've put this together quite a lot actually because I just think it's the coolest little cockpit ever. It's so detailed and nice. Um, yeah, they'll sort of sit in there a little bit like that. And so that's those. Uh, readjust the camera a little bit. I uh, got the main body complete. Uh, it's just really poseable. And nice, it's just primer at the moment. So what I'm going to be doing next with the airbrush is going around and uh, pre-shading. And then I'll be mixing up my final colours. Uh, and by the time that's ready, I will have the uh, cockpit in to the head. And I can actually start uh, making some, some decent progress. I'll go like in there somewhat like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll get the body pre-shaded, and by that stage I'll have all this assembled and in here, ready to go. This will be um, all fully primed and ready to go, and I'll be able to get some uh, some base color on everything, and then maybe the episode after that, uh, depending, I'll be able to do some weathering. And because I have uh, my snow base here, 
I'll be putting uh, sort of, uh, you know, like bits of snow on, you know, on the edges, just a little tiny bit, probably, probably more on the body here, like, I know on the AT, on the AT, -AT walkers in Empire, you can see, like, bits of snow and the machinery and stuff, so that's the, the look I'm going to go for. Alright, our ATST is all nice and weathered and all complete. So what we're going to be doing now is integrating him onto the uh, custom snow base I have. And to do that, instead of just putting the model just as it is on top of this, uh, I wanted the snow to carry on into the figure itself so the, the whole piece looked as one. So what I've got here is I've got baking soda, some cheap acrylic paint, toothpicks, uh, a crappy paintbrush I use for stirring, epoxy glue usually, and a bottle. And what we'll be doing is we'll be making some uh, makeshift snow and then applying it a little bit directly to the, uh, the model. So let's go. Right, so I've got it mixed up here. I don't really have any... Uh, specific ratio but you just want it sort of uh, like a thick cake icing consistency basically what you want is the kind of consistency where you can um, it'll stay on the your model and you can sort of shape it too and I'm just using a toothpick here so this is kind of this is kind of what we want and when it dries it'll dry hard and uh, we'll be able to put a, a varnish coat over it so it's, it's quite malleable, so this should work quite well. So let's get this white stuff onto the model here. Now all I'm doing is just getting a little bit on the end here and just... That's a truck going by. Um, just putting a little bit onto the model like that and kind of flattening it down with my finger. And I'm just trying to remember that a little bit goes a long way. Obviously, if this was real, this probably whole thing would be just full of snow, but I, I don't really want to go for that look. I just want to go for a real subtle, restrained kind of look. Uh, so we got a little bit on the feet already, a little bit on the claws, and we're going to move up and just to select places on the rest of the model and add some just like this. And obviously, I have absolutely just what tons of this but I couldn't really remember the ratio so um, you don't quite need to to mix that much but yeah we'll uh, carry on and the model will be finished and here's the finished model thanks everybody for watching and I hope to catch you on the next show I'll include some videos well some pictures rather at the tail end of this so you can get a better look so thank you very much for watching see you next time